Hello, good morning everyone. Our today's seminar is on uh, endovascular management of aortic disease, which will be presented by Dr. Tarun Madan sir. Namaskar. Good morning. I am Dr. Tarun Madan, working as associate professor in interventional cardiology department at UN Mehta Hospital, Ahmedabad. And uh, today I will be discussing with you about endovascular management of aortic disease. Aorta is a complex uh, disease, starts from the ascending aorta up to the distal part of aorta where the iliac bifurcation takes place. Start from the ascending aorta, it's a surgical disease. Ascending aorta cannot be managed with endovascular intervention. So we have to respect that and give it for surgical management. Starting from the arch, then upper thoracic aorta, lower thoracic aorta and abdominal aorta, it has various kinds of disease manifestations. We start from the arch where we have arch aneurysm where we can proceed for hybrid repair. Then descending thoracic aorta aneurysm where we can do endovascular repair along with hybrid repair. Type B aortic dissection, intramural hematoma, penetrating aortic ulcer. These are the different disease manifestations which can happen in the aorta. Then coming to blunt traumatic aortic injury when one, someone is driving in a car and you have a head-on collision so the spine because of the accelerated movement forward jerk is given to the thoracic aorta and there is a transaction sometimes partial or complete transaction then coming to congenital heart disease coarctation of aorta and then distal part of aorta in the form of atherosclerotic aortoiliac occlusion Larich syndrome and then last but not the least is Takayasu disease or non-specific aortoarthritis which can present with stenosis as well as aneurysms. There are different zones in the thoracic aorta where we can have disease planning, treatment planning. Starting from the zone 0, zone 0 means across the innominate artery. So aorta has three main branches. First branch is innominate artery, second branch is left common carotid artery and third branch is left subclavian artery. Zone 0 is across the innominate artery or proximal to the innominate artery. Between the innominate artery and the left carotid artery, as we can see here, there is zone 1 and then distal to the left common carotid artery zone 2 and distal to the left subclavian artery, it is zone 3 and then zone 4 beyond that. So if we want to treat beyond zone 0, we have to give an alternative source of blood supply to the innominate artery and the left common carotid artery. These are the different type of arches. We can have various types of arches like the type 1 arch, type 2 arch and type 3 arch. This depends on the takeoff of the left subclavian artery and the distance between the innominate artery. In the type 1 arch, all three vessels, innominate, left carotid, left subclavian are at one level. In type 2 arch, innominate is at lower level. So it becomes difficult to cannulate from the femoral axis. And type 3 is again difficult that it goes very very lower down and left common carotid and left subclavian all most they are at oblique origin there are different variations left common carotid can arise as a branch of the innominate artery then we can have uh, common origin of the left common carotid and right uh, innominate artery this is called bovine arch why it is called bovine arch because it resembles the horns of a bovine as you can see in this picture the innominate artery and left common carotid artery are arising as two horns of a bovine. There are different endovascular stents available to manage this disease. You take self-expanding covered stent grafts and treat the aneurysm pathology. So this is a pictorial uh, video which shows an uh, interesting case of distal arch aneurysm. This patient had hoarseness of voice because of the compression of the left recurrent laryngeal nerve and we can see the left common carotid and the innominate artery are having a common origin and just in front of the left subclavian artery there is a large aneurysm. So how do we treat the thoracic aortic aneurysm? Aneurysm basically is a weak area of aorta that will expand or bulge when the blood is pumped through it and the tunica media, intima and adventitia all three layers they bulge out and the aorta becomes weaker. So basically you put a covered stent, you endoline, this is called endolining of the aorta and you put a stent graft. So now what we did in this case, we first debranched both the left carotid and innominate artery and then 
alternative blood flow was given to both the carotid arteries. So, innominate was ligated and from the left subclavian to left common carotid, a extra thoracic or we can say just inside the supraclavicular area, a bypass graft was given. You can see this is a left common carotid artery where my pointer is pointing out and this is a left subclavian bypass and this goes to the left subclavian artery. So, this patient uh, then we did a CT angio after the bypass graft. We can see in the CT a beautiful graft from the ascending aorta to the right carotid and left carotid and from the left carotid we did a debranching bypass to the left subclavian artery. Now, in zone 0 deployment we started the thoracic valiant stent graft proximal to the innominate artery and we can see in this video which is a digital subtraction NGO that patient has got patent innominate artery and patent left carotid artery and the patent left subclavian artery. So, this patient was very nicely managed with the help of hybrid repair. Now, you can see in this subsequent video that aneurysm has disappeared, there is no endo leak, all three supraortic branches are nicely patent, left subclavian graft is also nicely patent. Now, to prevent the endo leak, we plugged the left subclavian artery with the help of emplazer vascular plug from the brachial axis so that there is no endo leak to the aneurysm. So, LSA left subclavian artery was also plugged. Now, this is a case of thoracic aortic aneurysm in the lower thoracic aorta. It's a huge aneurysm, very long and you can see in this moving video, there is a extensive bend in the distal part of thoracic aorta also. Now, we can do surgical replacement or we can do endovascular. So, endovascular was carried out by the femoral artery exposure and from the exposure, this is the first angio, you can see a marker pigtail in the place. There are white dots in the marker pigtail which is 1 cm apart and a thoracic stent graft was positioned in the landing zone proximal to the aneurysmal part of aorta and now you can see post stent deployment very successful patent graft and exclusion of the aneurysm. So, upper part and lower part in the first view and second view are very nicely seen. Now, coming to dissection in the type B aorta and penetrating aortic ulcer versus intramural hematoma. In the first slide, you can see this is a circular picture of aorta. Aorta has three layers, intima, media and adventitia. Suppose there is a dissection, there is a tear in the intima, which is called aortic dissection. Now, on the second picture, you can see the penetrating aortic ulcer, the intramural hematoma, the saccular aneurysm and the rupture. So, on the left hand side in the second picture, there is aortic lumen and on the top, we have written three symbols I, M, A. I means intima, M means media and A means adventitia. Whenever there is a penetrating aortic ulcer, that, that corresponds only to the intimal depth. So, the depth of that penetrating aortic ulcer is up to media only and this is called penetrating aortic ulcer. Suppose there is an intramural hematoma that will extend up to the media. So, it will be constrained by the adventitia and when it further progresses, there is a bulging, adventitia also bulges out that becomes a saccular aneurysm. So, all three layers are gone and if it ruptures, then that becomes an extra aortic hematoma. So, there are classification of aortic dissection standard type A, type B, type A means proximal with the uh, distal extent and type B is only distal. So, Debeke has again classified these uh, Stanford type A and B into four types, type 1, type 2, type 3A and type 3B. Type 1 is uh, corresponding to the uh, aortic root and ascending aorta. Type 2 is extending to the distal aorta but originating into the proximal aorta. And type 3A is in the thoracic aorta and 3B is thoracic plus abdominal aorta. So, as we can see, suprarenal extent and infrarenal extent or we can say supradiaphragmatic and infradiaphragmatic too. Now, this is a CT axial cuts which shows a classical intramural hematoma as we see the arrow is pointing towards the intramural hematoma. The intimal breach or the gap is extending up to the media. So, this needs to be addressed because this is a fore sign for the further aneurysmal development. So, this is a penetrating aortic ulcer you can see in this picture. Now, thoracic aortic dissection is a breach in which a tear develops in the inner layer of aorta. 
blood flows through the tear into the middle part and it slices the me media and extends proximal and distal both. So what we can do, we can seal this entry tear with the help of a thoracic stent graft which is called TVAR, thoracic endovascular stent graft. Now this is a type B dissection. The dissection started from distal to the subclavian artery. There is a false lumen expansion. The dissection was extending up to the origin of the left common iliac artery. So we chose the right common iliac artery. Now this DSA image shows that dissection flap is there in the inner curvature of thoracic aorta and the blood is flowing to the true lumen as well as the false lumen. Now after expansion of the stent in the true lumen across the left subclavian artery there is a nice sealing of the tear. The true lumen has widened. So basically there was increased pressure in the false lumen, low pressure in the true lumen. So that is why the false lumen was compressing the true lumen. Now by putting the stent we have expanded the true lumen and the true lumen has been pressurized and the false lumen has been depressurized. Now this is a blunt traumatic aortic injury. As I had discussed you are traveling in a car suddenly there is a jerk. The lower spine pushes forward, the upper spine goes back and it hits the aorta. Most of the times the dissection happens in the isthmus. That is the part where the arch of aorta joins the upper thoracic aorta. So this was a young gentleman, 22 year old who was hit by a four wheel and now we can see the thoracic aorta has got a large partially contained rupture. So a right femoral exposure was done and a thoracic stent graft was deployed in the upper part of thoracic aorta, sealing the tear, preventing the rupture and giving a new life to this patient. And patient was discharged within two days. This also had a left hemithorax opacity because of the blood collection in the thoracic cavity which was drained with the help of an intercostal drainage tube. Coming to congenital heart disease coarctation of aorta, it's a birth defect in the lower, pa uh, lower part of arch or upper part of thoracic aorta where there is significant narrowing. So it reduces the blood supply to the lower body. So as we can see, this is a thoracic aorta which is significantly narrow. This was a young lady who presented to us at the age of 3 to 6 months. That time she was subjected with balloon dilatation of coag and once she grew up, then she was subjected to coag repair. That time she was 1 year old and after that coag repair, she developed a restenosis at the age of 7 years. Then time, at that time we did a balloon dilatation and she again pulled on for 5 years. Now she was 12 years old and then again restenosis, we did again balloon dilatation because the body growth had not developed that by that time. So she again pulled on for 5 years. So right from the age of 6 months, 7 year, 12 year and now she was 18 years old. This is a fresh CT angio in the current year 2022. There was a severe narrowing on the upper thoracic aorta. So this patient was in follow from last 17 years. Now this time she was fully grown up and we proceeded for aortic stenting. In the first picture we can see there is a critical stenosis and after putting the stent the gradient had decreased to zero and the patient did extremely well. Third picture is of a patient who was having again uh, adult coag. She was almost 50 years old, critical stenosis of the thoracic aorta and LV dysfunction with RV dysfunction with some amount of pulmonary hypertension also. So she presented to us with congestive heart failure, ascites. She was medically stabilized and then ascending aorta was uh, angiography done from the right radial axis and then wire was crossed from the severe part of coarctation. Wire was passed into the femoral artery, exteriorized and then a stiff wire was parked and a balloon expandable Cheatham platinum stent was deployed in the narrowest portion of thoracic aorta. You can see in the last picture there was very nice blood flow to the thoracic aorta. The gradient becomes zero, ejection fraction improved, RV function improved and she is doing a healthy life. Now there is a, uh, another entity in which there is an embolism or thrombus at the distal part of aorta which is called Larich syndrome. It's a chronic infrarenal aortic occlusion which was first described in 1923 by Renel Larich as continuous total occlusion of infrarenal aorta and iliac arteries. Now you can see the juxtarenal aortic occlusion, infrarenal aortic occlusion, sometimes the renal perfusion is also hampered. We pass up catheter, we thrombolize this thrombus and once the thrombus is lysed 
the residual part is stented so first picture shows a chronic occlusion of the aorta and the last picture shows very nice perfusion to the thoracic or abdominal aorta and bilateral iliac artery again another case of uh, large syndrome juxta renal aortic occlusion long up to the both external iliac artery re getting reformed by the collaterals and after putting three stents one in the abdominal aorta and two in the iliac arteries this patient was given a new life so you can prevent or you can avoid doing a pabg or peripheral artery bypass in this procedure of hybrid endovascular stenting there is no need of laparotomy the blood loss is very minimal there is no need of anesthesia recovery time is very fast and patient is ambulated within a day takayasu arthritis so this is a disease which is very common in the south east asia it's a uncommon large vessel or medium size vessel inflammation in the arteries which creates structural changes which can lead to either stenosis end organ ischemia this can happen in the carotid arteries subclavian arteries thoracic aorta renal arteries iliac arteries sometimes pulmonary arteries and a very rarely we can see coronary artery involvement also so this was a tubular stenosis in the abdominal and thoracic aorta which was balloon dilated and then stented with the help of a wall stent wall stent is a self expanding large diameter stent and a balloon dilatation gave almost zero result so this was a interesting patient that patient was having 24 year of age she was uh, uh, of the child bearing age and she was not able to conceive because of very severe hypertension uncontrolled hypertension in spite of 3 to 4 drugs so gynec department referred this case to us and we did a balloon and dilatation once the ballooning was done stenting was done her blood pressure resolved and she gave birth to beautiful two twins so uh, the hybrid intervention or endovascular intervention especially at un mehta gave a new life to this young lady now uh, uh, any questions further are there i'll be happy to answer them thank you so much